And uh, here you just see all of the uh, symptoms that patients will have um, with heart failure. Um, they will be dyspneic, that is, they'll be short of breath. Um, you will find uh, maybe their lips are blue because they're not pumping enough oxygenated blood around. There may be heart murmurs, as we had in the patient in the last lecture, with aortic stenosis. Sometimes on physical exam, you will hear a loud extra heart sound that says the ventricle's really hurting, the patient's breathing fast. You may hear actually sounds from fluid in the lungs and so forth. There's a whole variety of physical findings that uh, the doctor finds that confirms the diagnosis of heart failure. Remember from the last lecture, the most important thing are the symptoms. They give you the clue. 90% of the answer of the diagnosis is in the history. You then move to the physical exam. Oh yes, I'm hearing things, I'm seeing things that suggest that the reason the patient is tired, the reason the patient is short of breath, the reason the patient has swelling in their legs is because of heart failure. Right ventricular heart failure alone uh, can cause a different uh, set of symptoms and signs. Of course, the edema, the extra fluid, is in the legs. Um, and you re will remember that you may have problems in the abdomen because the increased venous pressure backing up is not only in the legs, but it's also in the abdomen. The liver swells. So there's also swelling um, in the in, uh, fluid in the abdomen. Patients may find their, their waist size gaining, they become very, very tired, um, and uh, uh, often you can even feel on physical exam this bulging abdomen that's full of fluid. Um, remember again, right heart failure, much less common than left heart failure. Commonest cause of left heart failure, ischemic heart disease, that is, previous heart attacks. So here's a few diagrams that just show you what the cardiologist sees when they see a patient usually with very clear and significant heart failure. And you can see um, <clears throat> the, their pupils may be dilated from the, from the adrenaline that's circulating. Um, the skin may be gray or pale or, or even blue, cyanotic, um, and uh, a whole bunch of things. They may be short of breath, breathing fast. Um, they, they may be uncomfortable lying back and feel more comfortable breathing, sitting up. There may actually be sounds in the lungs from fluid in the lungs, crackles or so-called rowels. <clears throat> they may have a cough from the excess fluid that's in their system. There is um, often uh, increased uh, pressure in the veins, and you can actually see that in the neck. I'm going to show you a picture of that. And the blood pressure may be decreased because the cardiac output is down. Um, and also, the patient may even um, have some uh, discomfort in the abdomen, swelling and nausea and so forth. Uh, and of course, you may see bulging of the abdomen, as I mentioned, and uh, edema uh, uh, that is swelling in the legs. Uh, all of these are not seen necessarily in one patient, but in individuals, you may see a number of these findings. And of course, uh, patient's uh, anxiety level is increased course, because they're short of breath. One of the worst things that can happen to you is to be suffocated. It activates anxiety in a huge way. Um, and again, uh, you may see uh, the uh, fact that the patient has decreased oxygen saturation. Often we can test that with a little finger thing or an ear thing to see that the oxygen level in the blood is going down. Um, the patients in advanced heart failure may be confused, particularly in elderly patients. Um, there may be, uh, as I'm going to show you a picture in a moment, the jugular vein is distended because of high filling pressures in the right atrium transmitted back to the jugular vein. Um, there can, uh, if the patient's had a heart attack, there may be chest discomfort in association um, uh, with this, of course, the patient is markedly fatigued, um, and uh, you may hear the heart sounds that I mentioned before, this extra heart sound. The heart may be increased in rate, uh, and again, you may feel a uh, swelling of the liver or the spleen from uh, the, ve the venous congestion that goes back there, and of course, um, there's decreased cardiac output um, if you measure that, uh, often with an echo and the pulse may be therefore weak, the patient is often cool, cool, the skin may be sweaty. So here's a picture, this is a lovely picture of a distended um, internal jugular vein. You can see it rising up from just above the, uh, the clavicle, uh, the, the bone that's right here on the front of the chest, and you can see rising up almost to the level of the jaw. So this is a patient with quite advanced heart failure. 
In this case, it's a finding of right ventricular failure, but the commonest cause of right ventricular failure is often left ventricular failure that increases pressure in the lungs, increases the work of the right ventricle, which eventually fails. So this could be a patient with left ventricular and right ventricular failure, or it could be somebody with isolated right ventricular failure. And here we see an example of peripheral edema. You can see you push into the soft tissue of the leg, and you'll notice that the impression stays when you take your finger away. So this is a patient with advanced uh, peripheral edema. It also looks to me like the skin doesn't have its normal tone, its normal color. It looks gray and mottled, uh, and often this is because of decreased cardiac output. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.